four in a row, but then lost uh, at CQ Arena in January. So the Dukes trying to even this series this year, and this should be a good one this afternoon. Dukes with the opening tap, and Smalls to the glass, a little too strong on the layup as she got to the board in a hurry. I like my small starting off fast, knowing they're gonna have to keep an up-tempo offense. With the basketball, it's Mayo. Hands it off there to Holder. Holder into the right corner, skipping the pass this side. Murray kicks it out, three-point try. First shot of the day for the Tigers, it's an air ball. Mayo, a three-point shooter of 35% accuracy, has 24 of 68 connected this year. The Dukes with their second offense possession, 30 seconds in, still no score. Both teams missing on the initial shots. Here is Smalls, the preseason favorite to win the CAA Player of the Year honor, and she's having a great year again. Floats the shot up and scores it. Smalls at 18.4 points per game. She has fluctuated between 19 and low 19 and mid 18 for much of the month of January here into February for the Dukes. She did score 26 points the last time they faced Towson, so I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to put up those numbers again. Jeter gets the rebound on another air ball for the Towson Tigers, who are 0 for 2. Shot clock is at 6 because no rim was touched by the basketball. Running jumper off the iron, no good. Rebound for Kayla Cooper-Williams, and as Ali mentioned, recognized for 1,000 career rebounds in today's pregame ceremony. Just doing what she does best down in that paint. Future star for the Dukes is Kiki Jefferson. She's got the bucket. She averages 8.6 per game. The Dukes out in front, 4 nothing. On the right wing, we find Holder. Holder top of the circle, bringing it around here to Jeter. She is guarded by Jackie Benitez. Quick step around Benitez, rattles in and out, and an uncontested rebound for Cooper Williams. Smalls may need some help. No, she's okay. She'll continue with the possession. Gets a screen, backs up, that's a three. Hard off the back of the iron, tapped up into the hands of Jefferson who lays it up and in. Jefferson always being a reliable outlet, always near Kayla Cooper-Williams. Well, and that's something when the Dukes lost at Drexel last week, Cooper Williams was tapping it out, but the Dukes, her teammates were assuming she was gonna get the rebound. So a point of emphasis this week has been be around Kayla so that you can get that tapped rebound out. And we saw K uh, Kiki Jefferson capitalize on that one. When you have two six, play two six foot players in the paint, it's very hard not to bounce off of each other and play together. Six nothing JMU, here comes Small, this one. She'll lay up and in, and the Dukes are off and running. It's an 8 0 lead, 7.23 to go in the first quarter. And Coach Richardson calling a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. The Dukes jumping out in front. One entry into the NCAA postseason. So he knows this team is a lot better than what the record indicates. And of course, the Dukes realize that one of those wins the Tigers have came against James Madison. Yes, they do, but seeing an 8 to zero right now, they're coming off to a very offensively rhythmic game, which is something that we weren't doing very well on Sunday night against Drexel. That's a very good point, Allie, as here's Lexi Barrier with the basketball, and she does have a very good floor game here this year, as she is a back down from the scoring, and let the scoring kind of come more to her. Inside it goes to Cooper Williams. Fadeaway shot for Coop, no good. Rebound is Mayo, as she does a nice job of blocking out, boxing out Kiki Jefferson for the board. Towson still looking to get on the scoreboard after three minutes and 20 seconds elapsed. Onto the right wing on the foul, uh, foul line extended. Borges, Tess Borges, a 6'4 junior out of Buffalo, New York. And on the drive, it is Borges. Actually, yes, yeah, 6'4, and we get a foul. Kayla Cooper Williams has the first foul of the afternoon. And that resets the shot clock to 20 seconds. The inbound is Q Murray, 5'9", redshirt senior from Baltimore, Maryland. And the Dukes have subbed in with the freshman, Rain Tucker. I like Tuck how the Dukes are playing in, main, in man right now. I think that the matchup is very good between these two teams. You can stick with man. Long range three, tapped around. Let's see who last touched it. It was touched by the Tigers as Holder got a finger on it. Knocked it off and above. Jefferson, so the Dukes with the rebound. Eight nothing. 
as the Dukes are four out of seven from the field, only tried the one three-pointers. They're getting inside with the perimeter. There's a three-point try for Jefferson, hard off the opposite side. It's Jeff uh, Tucker with the rebound for the Dukes, and they do have a new shot clock. Smalls, all alone, takes the pass and hits the bucket. Kamaya Smalls alone on the three-point arc is a very scary sight for any kind of opponent that comes in here. 48 three-pointers on this year for the senior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That, or 117th three-point launch this year, and the Dukes out in front, 11 zip. Borges gives it off to the right wing. Foul line extended, there is cut off. Tucker on defense for the Dukes inside the perimeter. Shot clock at nine. Long range three, tried by Murray off the front of the iron. The rebound, Jackie Benitez tracks it down in the right corner. Benitez will bring it across the timeline herself, finds Small, she'll launch another three, hits another three. And the Dukes, a 14 to nothing lead. And this is a, in her James Madison career. So her, she's a, honing in on a special 100 for herself. Knowing this is halfway through CAA play too, making the most of all the time she has left in the Dukes jersey. Knocked out of bounds by Smalls. Siobhan Smith, a 5'11 sophomore from Pemberton Township, New Jersey, on the floor for the Tigers. Three and a half points and 2.3 rebounds per game. It's back in the basketball, it is Murray. Murray gets it in, over the top, tapped away, Benitez with a steal. Benitez off and running one on one. Circles, takes the shot, no good, rebound, contested, and hold on, we got steps. Rain Tucker had the rebound as she was actually battling her own teammate for the board. Leave it to them. But that's okay. I, you can I'll appreciate take the aggression, the yeah. Uh, uh, yes, appreciate the hustle, no doubt. I think Sean O'Regan would rather see that than watching a loose ball find its way into the hands of the opposition. Absolutely. Jeter on the right side, it is Murray. Murray, 0 for 9, the Tigers shooting, and we get a foul on James Madison. Second foul called this afternoon by our officiating crew. This is Jackie Benitez, her first team foul number two. This is a shooting foul. So Nakaya Mayo, 6'3", senior from the Bronx, New York, puts the Tigers on the board at 424 in the first period. She is a free throw shooter of 69%. And gets a favorable hop, hop, hop and down for its two points for the Tigers. Mayo getting those two. And the Dukes with Matty Green in the lineup for James Madison. 5'6", sophomore, Winchester, Virginia, four and a half points. 2.4 assists per game. And she'll track down about two rebounds each outing also. Another one of those players that the points kind of come to her as she kind of controls the Floyd with her ball skills. Baseline, here's Tucker. She'll drive, kicks out, green, shot clock at eight. Smalls, barrier, three-pointer Benitez, alone right side. That's the shot the Dukes want, the run out for Jeter. Jeter, though, green with her. Oh, a foul is called as Jeter goes up for the attempted lay-in. And Madison Green picks up the foul. That's her first, team foul number three. See Jeter, and here comes the pull up. Yep, she did get her. It's a little touch on the wrist there on the follow through. Jeter hits. She is a very good free throw shooter at 83%. So all three of the Tigers points have come from the strike. Splashes down another. That's her 62nd free throw this season. Little pressure applied, that'll take a little bit of the shot clock down. Here's Barrier, dumps it off, and Tucker lays it in. That is where Lexi Barrier has improved her game this year. Absolutely, her peripheral is just amazing. She can see players from all over the court. Rain Tucker skying in for the rebound. Here's Green, while she changed directions in mid-stride. Benitez, right corner, that's her spot. Benitez and Small get high. It's going to be a long game for the opponent. Dukes 19 to 4, 8 out of 14 from the field, and an uh, impressive 3 out of 6 on three pointers. Here's Murray, Q with it, with Green defending her. Jeter steps into a 3. Wow. 
check the backboard for cracks after that one. I'd say the same thing if a JMU player shot at that point. Absolutely, poorly. it was a little hard off the rim. It was. Skying rebound, opposite side. Smith pulls it down, stops as she gets to the perimeter. Smalls harassing defensively, ripped away by Benitez, but into the hand of Borges. Shot clock is at 18. The Dukes defense has been completely locked down this first half. Yeah, Towson a little frustrated, a little discombobulated offensively here. Borges driving against Tucker, tries to scoop it up. And Barrier comes up with a loose basketball. Smalls will take it across the timeline for JMU. Left-handed dribble, changes the ball to the right hand, misses the shot, out of bounds, JMU. Turns the basketball over to Towson on the rebound miss. We should be in a media timeout here. No, we're not, we're good, we're good. I think you and I might be discombobulated too. Yeah, I, you're right, that, that seven minute one will go for our timeout here in this quarter. So it's just a long weekend all together. <laughs> Yesterday we were at uh, Lacrosse outside in the chilly weather. Oh, very nice. And at the end of that, uh, the crew working with me said, let's go back to the indoor sports. I said, see you at the combo tomorrow. It's the beauty of spring sports where it's not really spring yet. We are halfway through winter, and there's a bucket, a three-pointer for Jeter. Jeter has five as she connects for her 47th three-pointer of the season. Devin Merritt dribbles it across the timeline for James Madison, hands it off to Jefferson, gets it into the hand of the playmaker, Green. 16 on the shot clock. Skip pass, Benitez drives to the baseline, gets some contact, partially blocked. Holder, here comes Jeter, she may, well, she has to slow it down as she has to face two Dukes. Jeter gives it up to Murray at the top of the circle. Q gets into the keyhole. Double team there, backs it out with 16 seconds. It is Mayo, she'll drive Mayo with a tough shot and she scores it for Towson. Noticing that Towson slowed down their offense a little bit there and was able to run a couple plays, hence why there are two more points on the board right now. They're also slowing down the Dukes offense just enough by getting some pressure. They're not allowing them to just bring it up to the midcourt stripe. And that does chew up a little bit of the 30 second clock each time. It's nice to see the younger players like Maddie Green and Kiki Jefferson really being the playmakers on this court right now. Pass comes out to Benitez. Five seconds, Benitez knocked away. All right, that may be a good thing because now with three seconds, the Dukes can actually set something up where before it looked like they were in a bit of an offensive scramble. They got lucky they didn't get trapped in the corner as well. The inbounds goes to Green. Green. And the horn goes off. She could not get the shot. Sean okay. O'Regan calls for a sub as Jalen Carradine will come in. She gets there in time. And she'll come in for Devin Merritt. Carradine, a 5'10 sophomore from Abington, Maryland. A very good rebounder. Graceful rebounder, powerful grace. Uh, she is listed at 5'10", and I'll say this throughout her career. She plays more like she's 6'2", 6'3". Oh, uh, she is a reliable outlet if I've ever seen one. She'll try to defend. She does so. Ball tapped out into the hands of Mayo to Jeter. Pass a little wide. Jeter goes baseline. Tries the scoop shot. It is blocked by the Dukes. Mayo gets her own possession. Or make that uh, Jeter, rather. Mayo, high shot, no good. Rebound comes down. It is Jefferson who gets plowed into by Raina Barber. Barber gets called for the foul, and she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Did not see the blinker that she was changing lanes. Her first foul, in fact, that is the only foul called against the Tigers here in this first quarter of play. Smalls back in with 11.4 seconds to go. Benitez comes out. Got Jefferson, here's Smalls, he'll put it in. Smalls hands down low, Rain Tucker waits and scores. The patience on that shot was just beautiful. Seeing her coming from over the shoulder. Good first period for the Dukes of JMU, jumping out to a 14 to nothing lead, although the Tigers close out the period on a 9-7 run. But JMU wins the period 21 to nine after one quarter here this afternoon at the JMU Con Bookstore is a proud partner of JMU Athletics. One quarter in the books here at the JMU Convocation Center. I'm Kurt Dudley along with Allie Barefoot.
on a Sunday matinee day. Three point try, no good. And who touched it last? The Tigers did. JMU with the basketball. Well, Dukes are back home again next Sunday. It is the Play for K Pink game. So wear your pink gear and cheer on the Dukes as we raise breast cancer awareness during the annual Play for K Pink game. I had to actually check to make sure today's wasn't. So I wore the white shirt instead of the pink shirt. Next week, it's the pink shirt. Perfect. Innovative. Well, trying to think ahead a little <laughs> bit anyway. We've got two games in town next. In fact, the next home game for the Dukes is at noon on Friday. Foul on the floor. We were talking earlier about how it feels like we haven't been here in a little while, at least for the women's at least. And it is true, and we're getting – the Dukes have five games remaining here at the combo, including today's. Here's Mur Murray's first foul. Um, as the Dukes move into the new Atlantic Union Bank Center next year. And they're doing a lot of indoor work during this winter, of course. I don't blame them. Green, left-handed three is good. Yeah. Maddie Green has her 17 tray of the campaign, and the Dukes lead it 24 to 9. Jumper in the lane, no good. Green with a floor rebound for James Madison. She'll bring it up on her own accord. Passes it down low. Good look for Jefferson, who couldn't finish, unfortunately. Ball comes out. It's to Smalls. Back out to Cooper Williams. Three-pointer. How about that for scrambled eggs? And they made something out of it. I think if they added one more pass, it couldn't have been any prettier than that. Green with back-to-back -back trees, an unconventional one at that. And the rebound for Smalls on the driving Towson shot missed by La Caitlin Wright. Jefferson eyes a three pointer. Rattles in and out the fans with the collective <laughs> ooh and ah on that one. And a good group here today watching the ball game. It is the Duke Dog Reading Day program, one of the best women's basketball and now men's basketball promotional uh, programs in the country. And an offensive rebound going from Mayo. She'll get a chance to. Go to the free throw line as Mark Hardcastle calls the foul, and he does so on Jalen Carradine. Carradine can be very aggressive, and she will pick up the fouls every once in a while. Yes, she can. She noticed afterwards she should have kept her hand straight up, and she realized it once it happened, but sometimes you just get ahead in the game. Well, she is defensive-minded. After all, both her parents are from the Army. That'll make you have a little defensive, yes, <laughs> defensive shield on your back. <laughs> <laughs> One out of two for Mayo. Yeah, she has lived in a number of places. Born in Texas, lived in Chicago. And in Maryland, that's where she comes to JMU. And on the opposite end for the Dukes, it is out of Winchester, Virginia, just north of here, about an hour. Maddie Green draws the contact from Maggie Sharp, who's just in the lineup. The freshman from Stafford, Virginia, went to a Mountain View High School in green. Left-handed shooter. Drops it in. She's another one of those players that I think plays taller than her height actually is. She takes advantage of it, especially driving down low and just taking charge. And you can see that quite often in the women's game, I think, more so in the men's, where you do get some players that if they don't have that statue, they figure out how to compensate for that and make it a part of their game. I saw a Division Three game earlier this year where the point guard, she was 5'2 or something of that sort. Obviously not very tall, but she was a really good playmaker. Did a lot of stuff underneath, surprisingly. Oh, yeah. Barrier on the fadeaway. Ripped down by Mayo. She controls the glass for the Tigers. Jumper. Nice looking shot. That was pretty. Q Murray in transition with the jump shot. Gives the Tigers 12 points. Crossover for Green, leaves it down low for Cooper Williams, steps into the layup. Saw that pass a little too close to her face. I don't think Cooper Williams was expecting that heat coming from that pass. Cooper Williams, who missed four games, including the last couple of home games for the Dukes due to an injury, but obviously she's running the floor very well. Yeah, we're glad to see Cooper Williams back, but the players that came in and, and subsided for her, they did an excellent job and really showed it. Reagan has multiple outlets he can use. Cooper Williams, that pass a little too far down the line from Smalls and a rare turnover for the Dukes in this first half of play. Contact was made, it's a two-shot foul. 
And that was just inches away from becoming a three-point play possibility. And the foul is on Cooper Williams. That is her second. So we'll see what the Dukes will do here. There's the foul. All right, so Holder comes back in. And Tess Borges comes back in for Towson. Jackie Benitez back in the lineup for JMU, as is Rain Tucker. Tucker out of New Carrollton, Maryland. Riverdale Baptist. Mayo. Mayo has six. Tigers making some hay at the free throw line in this first half. Seven out of eight. And you got to give it to anybody that comes in the Convocation Center and can do well at the free throw line, knowing the crowd, especially the pep rally, that makes a lot of noise no matter what the score is. Well, when they got to shoot into the pep band, that's a little tougher at the opposite end, and Towson will have to do that. And it's, uh, it's by design that the pep band is on the visiting end of the court. Absolutely, and they enjoy it, let me tell you. They look forward to when they shoot free throws down there. Jumper is shy for Smalls. That's her, she is four out of eight from the field. That was a two-pointer down low. Borges double team spins, leaves it off her holder. Good play. Great pass. Way to see the other player coming from the other side. I don't know if there was verbal communications or just the visual, but that was a good play to finish for the Tigers. Jumper is good. There's Barrier. It's her first bucket of the day. She becomes the seventh Duke with points this afternoon. That must have been just touched by a Duke. Kiki may have gotten a finger or two on it, but I'm not sure. Kiki got a key on it. A key. There you go. Okay. Tossed in by Mayo. Mayo drives, jump shot off the glass, rebound, goes to Tuck, uh, make that uh, Jefferson rather. Jefferson pulls it up, finds an open Benitez, closing out too late. Benitez bangs in another three. Dukes are five out of 10 on three point. Nope, change that, six out of 11. I'm a little ahead of the stats. That's even better. Absolutely, you gotta watch Benitez in that corner. When she gets hot, she gets hot. 20 point lead, the largest of the ball game for the Dukes who led one time 14 to nothing. Tapped out of bounds, last touch by Borges. 5.04 to go in the half. Devin Merritt comes back in for Madison. Devin A. Senior out of Pennsylvania. Went to Reading, uh, is from Reading, Pennsylvania, Burke's Catholic High School. She and uh, now left fielder Trayvon Dabney, both uh, from Burke's Catholic oh. High School. She's also a media arts and design major with she myself. Is. That's right. A couple classes with her. It's very fun. Yeah, had you in the spring class, and uh, Devin took it in the fall. Just missed it. You wouldn't have wanted both of us in the same uh, yeah, class. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could have handled that. That's, that would have been tough. 450 to go. Uh, it's tough enough now. I got Savannah Marshall in my class. What am I going <laughs> to do? 36 to 16. The Dukes out in front. 450 to go. Point range. A note from Towson, too. This I picked up from Towson Women's Hoops Twitter account in that uh, Mayo has moved into seventh all-time in career rebounds with 715. Well, and she has six on the night so far, and she's been very aggressive in the paint, so I'm not surprised. She's making career history for Towson. Nine points as she comes up with that bucket. Dukes didn't transition defensively. Let the, that slide through a little too easy. And the basket is scored, and the foul count that against the Dukes Benitez. Three-point play, Mayo. She is the first Tiger in double figures. And she'll join JMU's Kamaya Smalls, who's been on 10 for a while now. Leading scorer, Jeter's had kind of a slow start in this first half, but I have no fear that she will be back in the second. Running at Smalls. Smalls with contact, too strong. Tucker, count it! Rain Tucker has six points. Averages just 2.3, but she gets that on the offensive stick back. Foul is called against Borges. That's her first. And Tucker gets the free throw, and she is 13 out of 22, 59% for Tucker. Rebound Borges. 4.23 to go before intermission. We'll take a look at some other sports news. Jamie Men 
Well, they took a tough loss yesterday, falling in the last few seconds at Delaware. We'll review that one for you. That goes off Mayo. She said JMU hit it. That is true, but then it hit her knee before it went out, according to the official. Ricocheted a little bit before it decided to leave the court. Here it comes. Oh, touched it right there on that heel. There's Barrier, skips the pass, far side to Smalls, to Green. Those are tall passes. Making the defense work. And they are in a zone. Oh, the Tigers breaking down that zone, floating it in. Smalls can't get it to fall. Rebound the battle. Oh, and look at that push. That uh, probably, I'm surprised they don't tee that up. That was pretty flagrant. And they might. And credit to Devin Merritt, keeping her composure as well when that was going on. They may go look at this, uh, and they, I think they should. We do have a chance to take a look at it again. Mark Hardcastle, uh, the lead official there going over. Here it is. Uh, they got tied up. Okay, so they were hooked up, and then watch at the end here, just the shove. Just the shove. I mean, Merritt, Merritt could have easily been called for a foul initially, and oftentimes it is the second that gets called. Well, you got to understand with basketball being a contact sport, you're going to get wrapped up sometimes, but it's just a matter of keeping that composure and just slipping that arm away and moving on to the next play. The board is just losing composure there a bit, so they may call this a flagrant. Uh, I think you have to. I don't see how you can say that was. It's a little not, over the top. Yeah, yeah not, not purposeful. Once again, you know, attitudes and everything just get a little high sometimes. Oh, certainly. It's going to happen in the course of a game. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you just love the sport so much, you get a little into it. Coming up this uh, Wednesday, we've got some more lacrosse action for you, the Dukes and the and the. Uh, Virginia Tech Hokies, it's a five o'clock start. You can see that on Matazone free audio, excuse me, free video. If you could see it on free audio, that'd be something. Uh, free <laughs> Not yet. video. <laughs> Not yet, that's right. Well, sort of. You combine them, interlace them. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> Hokies and the Dukes, that is five o'clock. Another top 25 matchup. Dukes did lose to number two North Carolina 15-7 yesterday. I'll take a little closer look at the, that outcome yesterday as well. Hopefully it'll be a little warmer this coming week. Uh, yeah, I do. I hope it is. It was it was chilly. Even though it was sunny yesterday for the most part, it was chilly out there with the breezes atop what I like to call the Centera Tower. Well, why Tech and JMU make such good opponents is that Blacksburg is similar in Harrisburg in the way that the wind works. You're not kidding. Oh, my goodness. Well, I've always said the Bergs have their own, they have their own weather. It's a Berg thing. Okay, so they're going to call the foul on... Borges for second, but that's it. No other penalty that I know of. They may have could have looked at Devin Merritt being wrapped up in her as well. It could have just been a both sides kind of thing. We'll give her the foul and move on to the next play. Well, they, they're the, the officials are the ones that make the judgment. I do not look good in stripes, so I did not <laughs> choose that profession. Got it. There's the alley-oop to Smalls, and she scores it on the back door. Wow. Talk about a Sports Center highlight. That was beautiful. Just good team connection there. Well, Duke's had plenty of time to draw that one up. Of course, we see Smalls do that on occasion anyway. And I'm sure that, uh, well, the scouting report shows she can do that. Her vertical, absolutely, getting up next to the backboard. Well, it takes a great pass, and Green delivered. 40 to 19, 21 point spread is the largest of the ball game. Rebound battled for, and Caradine strengthens that one away. Green brings it across, under three minutes to go in the first half. The Dukes have led from the get go, taking the 14 to nothing advantage. Smalls gives it up, Barrier, the two player game, Barrier. Got the feet started a little too soon. Barrier, who wants to uh, have a career in athletics in some form or fashion, I can see she may uh, 
think from an administrative standpoint, she may like coaching a little bit, but maybe eventually get into some athletic administration. Oh yeah, she has a personality as well, a CEO that's written all over, you know, she, whatever she does, she'll take very good care of it. And Paradigm took a big tumble to the floor. Ball knocked away by Smalls, blindly so, and Jeter picks it up. Jeter with a heavy bounce, bumping its Tucker as she bumps Rain. Uh, excuse me, bumps right, she is Rain. Tucker has her first personal foul. That's just aggressive. Only the four team foul in the period. Both teams with four. So 227, anything from here out goes to the free throw line. And I'm not opposed to the aggression we've seen so far. I think that's what's making it a good game. And a foul on Maddie Green. Our the fans behind us were calling that one. You see it happening. That is the fifth, so it does send La Caitlin Wright, a 6'5 junior from Alamo, Georgia, out of Wheeler County, to the free throw line where she is 10 out of 16. Jefferson back in for the Dukes. Never at a loss of words. See, for Maddie Green, that is her second personal foul, so that. Uh, the biggest concern out of that play. Jefferson with the rebound for the Dukes. Smalls have five, has five boards. That's four for Jefferson. Tucker has four. Caradine with a couple. Smalls. 15 points. Right on the money. That opens the lead up even further. The Dukes in this period outscoring the Tigers 22 to 10. And Tucker with another rebound for James Madison and the ability to bring it up on her own. She's going to drive against Mayo, kicks out the Smalls. 20 on the shot clock, plenty of time to work with. Barrier spins, leaves it down low, and it blocked authoritatively so by Mayo. Rebound comes out to the Tigers, and the blindside pass through the hands of Holder. Good run for the Tigers, just tough on the end to execute. JMU defense moving that offense a little bit too fast, causing them to jumble the ball a little bit. Caradine will inbound to Smalls, and Smalls at the opposite end has Tucker, Jefferson, and Barrier. So uh, one sophomore, uh, two seniors, and two freshmen on the court for James Madison at the moment. 120 to go in the half. Smalls with 11, kicks it over. Caradine, Caradine takes the shot, no good. They reset the shot clock to 20 seconds. Must have hit right under the bottom of the rim. I thought she was a little deeper than that from down here. Barrier all alone. She may have had too much time on the shot. Overthinking it's maybe a little bit. Free throw extended, nice looking shot, but in and out it goes. Rebound for the Dukes. Jefferson on the run for James Madison. Jefferson. Somewhat of a Euro step out to Barrier. She doesn't want to take the three here. Smalls acted like she wanted to take the tray, but a lot of time in the shot clock, no hurry. Slowing it down a little bit, 40 seconds to play. 35 seconds remaining. Seven on the shot clock. Jefferson drives against Mayo. The kick out, Barrier eyes the three, hits the three! Only what? five points so far, but she's done so many other things on the court that's making the Dukes have such a big lead. That tray opens up the advantage by 27. And a block. Towson maintains possession, 5.2 to go in the half. Shauna Regan has to be extremely pleased with the JMU defense here in this period. And when I mean period, the entire half, not just the quarter. No, from start to finish, this team has been locked in. No shot there. 46-19. My goodness, the Dukes jump out to the 14-0 lead. Build a 27-point lead here by the half, shooting 49% from the field, 58%, 8 out of 14 on trees, and a 9-point plus side on the rebounds. 
We'll get out of here with a timeout. When we come back, we may see a little diaper derby action. Let's see if we can get in on that. We'll return after this on Flow All right, let's get underway. 46-19, second half. Commencing here at the Convocation Center. Jackie Benitez launches the first shot of the second period. And Barrier comes up with a rebound for the Dukes. Collision of bodies. No foul either way. Benitez, a little ball rip, nothing doing there. Shot clock at 11. Towson showing some ferocity coming out. Tapped away. Jefferson. Uh, Barrier should have taken that shot. They give it to Benitez. Three-pointer. It's a live ball. Barrier has a rebound for the Dukes. Well, they just uh, did everything they could in those 30 seconds Absolutely. to score a bucket. I want to know the speech that they got during halftime. They're coming out very hot. Barrier drops it off, and Smalls chucks it in. It seemed like a long time for two points. <laughs> there was, a, was a long there possession. Was a, I'll tell you, there was a lot of energy from both teams for that yeah. team. 48 to 19. I told you it'd be a lot of scrapping and clawing and scratching and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna see a different half here from the Towson Tigers. Uh, Towson again shooting just 15% in the first half, five out of 34. One out of nine on three pointers. Dukes at plus 13 on the rebounds to the moment. Oh, that was knocked off the hand. Now they're gonna say a shot clock violation. which is correct. I guess it was a matter of the timing. Barrier into the corner, Jefferson over the top, goes to Cooper Williams, takes the hop, can't get it to fall, tapped away, Smalls, but tracked down Murray. Smalls Cube. coming in from out of nowhere to try to get that tip out of the rebound. Murray does track it down, however. She's gonna launch a long range three. Hard off the iron and a foul over the back called against Holder. That is her first. In the foul situation, uh, two for Borges, one each for Sharp, Barber, and uh, Murray. And then you get that one for Holder for the Dukes. Matty Green has a couple, as does Benitez, and there's a three pointer for Kiki. Jefferson gives her seven. Jefferson. We were saying earlier, you know, you don't want to let Kamaya Smalls and Jackie Benitez get open on that arc, but in all honesty, any player can rip it from the three. Cooper Williams, the other Duke with two fouls as we look over there as Borges hits a long range two. That's her first bucket of the contest on her third shot and a takeaway for the Tigers. Jefferson eludes going up. Running into the back of Murray. Smart playing by Murray, slowing it down, knowing his surroundings. A 32-point lead, the largest for the ball game. It's 30 at the moment. And Barrier comes up with a rebound. Dribbling, looking ahead, it goes to Benitez. Jefferson running the floor nicely for the Dukes. Here is Smalls, and she hesitates. I like the move, 19 for Camayo Smalls. Charge is the call. Jefferson, oh, okay, she was screaming. I was, I was worried for a split second there, but she was screaming in celebration, not in pain. Yeah, you learn to call kind of the same emotion. And the second foul registered against Holder, and both of them have been here in this half. Here's Kamaya, crossover, elevates. Jefferson, no, make that Tucker rather, beg your pardon. Rain Tucker with eight. Really showing she's got a true nose for the ball. She just knows where to be at the right time. Mayo, and blocked by Cooper Williams, comes up with a rebound as well, needs some help, she drugged the foot. Double dribble is the call, travel. I love the smile afterwards though, she knew what she did, she just got ahead of herself there. Here it comes again, the block which is clean, look at the spin off the ball, and she was gonna turn into a point forward, point center, and uh, got in trouble. Mayo 
Launches the three and hits it. Mayo has 13, the Baker's dozen for the senior from Bronx, New York. And she can shoot the three at 35%. She's got a length so she can get down below and she can also shoot from the outside as we have already seen in her play exhibited here today. And a foul is called, it goes against Holder. She picks up her third personal as she has gone foul prone here to start the second half. And with that, Smith will come in, no scores, uh, no points for Smith. Jeter will take a breather, interestingly, and here's Micah Johnson Matthews, a 5'8 grad student out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, where the CAA tournament was held for a good number of years. This year it's at Elon. Next year it's at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. So go ahead and circle your calendar on that one, Oh, Allie. absolutely. It'll come quicker than we think it will. No, no doubt. And Benitez hits the free throw. Two for two for Jackie. Jackie B has eight. Be really nice to see multiple Dukes players go into double digits at the end of this game. It's a very possible. As uh, right now, we've got Smalls with 19. She is a, a point away from hitting 20 for the 11th time this year. Rain Tucker calls for that personal foul. That's her second team foul number one in this period. Skipping the pass out, it goes. Mayo block. <laughs> Cooper Williams with another block in the quarter. JMU players off the bench after that block celebrating. It's not every day you stuff six foot three. <laughs> Good point. Pass will come out. And a charge against the Tigers. May, uh, Murray with the foul, that's her second. So what's the block here. Is Cooper Williams in your class? She is a uh, year No, no, I mean, was she in your, your broadcast? Yes, class? yes, yes. Because we used her in a blocking exhibition in class one oh, time. Oh, yes, Remember we that? did. Of course, we had poor Kaylin, uh, Keelan Leonard as the opposition. It wasn't fair. Well, you know, Cooper Williams doesn't like all the attention anyways, but she certainly didn't like it in class, but she was a good sport. <laughs> so was Keelan. She knew as, as soon as I told her what we are going to do, she got a few thanks. Fans appreciative of that play by the Dukes. Green needed some help. Tucker gives it. Tried to wrap the pass around. Kicked by Cooper Williams, I think. They're going to say it's uh, the Tigers. That drops us underneath five minutes here in this period. So it is 57-24. Uh, JMU with the lead, back with more here at the Combo right after these messages on Flow Sports. The Atlantic Union Bank Center opens in November 20. A lot of credit and even gave kudos to her high school guidance counselor uh, for uh, guiding her into finding great schools to play her college basketball. Well, it all starts with the high school guidance counselor and I can tell they're probably proud of how the Dukes are playing today. Here is Green charging through, can't get it to fall. The weak side rebound is Smith. 57-24. It is Q Murray at the top of the circle as they're trying to get something established here for the Towson Tigers. 13 on the shot clock. Here is Mayo. Four seconds on the shot clock. Three-pointer launched off the rim and the rebound. A nice box out for Lexi Barrier. Seems like the Towson Tigers are trying to pass a little bit more, spread that defense out. And the bucket for Lexi Barrier as she has seven. Chili Suarito is on the court number 13 for the Towson Tigers. First time we see her today. That's off the back of the iron, and the rebound is pulled in. Kiki Jefferson. Jefferson, good chance that she'll be, certainly she'll be on the all-rookie team, and a good chance she may be the rookie of the year in the Colonial. Look at that move for Cooper Williams. 
taking advantage of that pivot foot. 61-24, JMU well in control here, late in this third stanza. Mayo. And a foul called against Green, reaching in. That's her third. Team second. Paradine comes in for JMU. And it is Johnson Matthew. 10 seconds on the shot clock, winding down. Matt Murray takes the shot, rattles around, can't fall, and it is Jefferson. Kiki, coast to coast, gets it knocked away. <laughs> Olivia Finkel, number 14 on the court, plays volleyball for the Towson Tigers. I want to thank uh, Savannah for uh, that scouting report on her. Savannah Marshall of JMU Volleyball sitting here with us this afternoon. She is the, uh, the libero for the Dukes. And so uh, she had to uh, face some of those finkel blasts this past year. <laughs> Crossover for Green, loses the basketball and picked up Murray. Murray on the run, and she'll finish. Inbounds comes to Barrier, walks it up. This uh, game suddenly just uh, it's just happening, you know? It's I, yeah, <laughs> I think that's a good way to put it. I think it's definitely slowing down a little bit. Off the uh, backboard, a back, to, back rim it is for Green. Stepping in, three-pointer, that's good for Jeter. Three points, Jeter. Who's been relatively quiet tonight. That gives her eight points. Her second trade this afternoon, and that gives her 48 for the season. But well, one, we're seeing a lot of the uh, Towson depth the bench in on the uh, action here. Foul is on Smith, that's her first. Devin Merritt will check in for Cooper Williams. This is the only game for the Dukes this week and the Tigers. The, these two are the travel partners. Much like uh, on the men's side, travel partners as well. So JMU and Towson in men's play only have one game this week and it's against each other. It's here on Saturday night at eight. Jefferson has eight points. Eight o'clock, it's gonna be a, a late Saturday night. I need to ask why. I, I'm not sure why that is at eight. Knocked in again, although. Nine for Jefferson. John Salem says something about Valentine's, okay. Give him a little more time to celebrate. That's the next day. <laughs> That's the day before. Anyway, I, there is choices coming up this weekend, so there may be an event in here earlier in the day. Yes, there, I that, actually have to give a tour on that, Saturday. That might be what it is. That's just a theory. Caradine comes up with it, but Jeter will knock it off of Caradine. Actually, we're going to have the noon game on Friday, so you can go out for Valentine's Day Friday night. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'll put it in my calendar. I'll have to ask John when he's got his Valentine's schedule <laughs> dinner. Friday evening. There you go. See? Here Smalls comes out of the pack with it for the Dukes, and Jeter deflects it. On the run. Whoops. Needs to get the ball back. Score the bucket and a foul on the Dukes. It's Barrier. Basket for Murray, who's got six. That's the first on Barrier, third team foul. Holder comes back in. Q Murray goes to the free throw line to shoot one. She's got six points for her efforts in Harrisonburg this afternoon. On the miss, it's Caradine with the rebound. And the lay-in good. 
Good pass. Amaya Smalls. Seeing some, uh, Barrier needed some help. Smalls cutting in. Smalls, the 11th time this year, scores at least 20 points in a ball game, and that is the 22nd time in her career. So about one, out, a little less than one out of every five games, Kamaya throughout her career has given the Dukes a 20-point effort. Just a fabulous accolade. Defending against Jeter, thrown out a little too far, and Smalls with the rebound. Last touch by the Tigers, 20.9 seconds to go before the fourth quarter. Looks like Jeter's also finding a little bit of rhythm here, getting a little more aggressive, taking more shots. Well, sometimes, and this is just the nature, you, know, you get a good player like that, and when the game is out of hand, late, they can take over and score a lot of those points that way. And, um, the game, as I said, it happens. It just changes oh, a bit. Small stutters. Lost the handle as somebody assisted in losing it. Last touch by the Tigers. One second to go. We'll give it a nice dramatic finish at the end of the third. Let's see what the Dukes have drawn up. Right now, Sean O'Regan talking with one of the officials. The inbounds. Smalls can't quite get enough underneath it. And that's the end of the third period. In the frame, the Dukes outscored the Tigers 19 to 12. And that is actually the closest quarter thus far today. But the Dukes well in command of this one. We'll be back for the final. Their percentage has gone up to 19% after 15% uh, in the first two stanzas. But the Dukes still maintaining a substantial lead here at the uh, JMU Convocation Center. Sid Beasley still uh, wandering around, just hugging everybody. Making her rounds. The Towson <laughs> Tigers have gotten a little bit better at three-point shooting as well. Made a couple more since the first half. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry Summers, is, who also ripped down one of the numbers, former trainer, when Sid was here, they have just met up in the stands. Meanwhile, here on the court, it's a 65-31 spread favoring James Madison. <laughs> she is hugging everybody. Mayo arcing three-pointer. And shielded off Benitez. I guess it has to be that high when you shoot over Kayla Cooper Williams. That is a, a very good point. That's right. It, it's all physics. That's what, we, that's what she was thinking. Geometry. The physics of it. The geometry <laughs> came into play. Jefferson drives, bumps with Holder. Jefferson tumbles down, has to get rid of the basketball. She might have been better off just to go ahead and take the travel because then the Dukes could set up defensively, but she wasn't thinking about that. And instead it ends up being JMU's basketball, ultimately as Jeter tried to push the pace at the opposite end. Well, the past couple of turnovers are actually gone straight into Jeter's hands as well, which is a Kudos to Jeter for being in the right place, right time, but also having to work around her is becoming a Duke's difficulty. Now this is kind of remarkable. I haven't really paid much attention to this, quite honestly, but the Dukes have 12 turnovers. The Tigers have just six. I think the Tigers just haven't been able to find that net. I think the rim has not been their friend today. A lot of shots have been on target, but just have gone in and out. And you know, it could have been a on the road kind of thing. It could have been an offensive rhythm, but it's definitely not the turnovers that's causing this issue. In essence, they're turning it over with missed shots, and the Dukes on the boards have a plus 23. It's 50 to 27 in that category. Rain Tucker called for the foul. That's her third. The Dukes had a plus 37 rebound advantage at UNC Wilmington in mid January. Holder with a nice adjustment, agility-wise, and a foul is on Holder. That's her fourth. All of them have come here since the break. And the Dukes with 11 points off the Dukes' 12 turnovers. Now they actually have 13 turnovers registered at the moment. Here's. Cooper, or make that uh, Benitez, rather, hands it off to Jefferson. 
Looks out Tucker. She's going to try a three. And Tucker got involved, knocking the ball free, and it ends up Jefferson scoring the basket, and a Tiger is down on the floor. Got hit in the head. That's Holder. Let's hope she's okay. My vision was already on the other side of the court after that shot, so I didn't get to see it, but... Yeah, trainer will come out from Towson to uh, take a look at Holder, who is a senior from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Roland Park Country School. We, well, let's watch the, uh, the action here. Oh, she got hit on the, by the elbow of Jefferson just coming down after the shot. Those pointy elbows can be very dangerous. Especially around the temple area. Very no, soft, no very doubt. soft. There, this one right at you, you'll see it. Let's see. Yep, here it is. Well, she goes down in a heap. She'll go on to the, uh, the bench area. And Siobhan Smith reports back in for Towson. 51st all-time meeting. The Dukes looking for their 45th all-time win against the Towson Tigers right now well on the way with 737 remaining. Benitez needs some help, gets it from Jefferson. Kiki slows it down. Dukes can certainly afford to take a little air out of the basketball with a sizable lead. Smalls will drive, draws contact, score the bucket as Smith is called for the foul. That's her second. Swalls has points number 22 and 23. 24 is pending. Watch the drive here by Smalls. Quick step. This is a strong finish. And top it off with that big old smile. She's just really having fun out there. She is one of the best in post-game press conferences, too. She uh, always has something very good, insightful to say. Oh, I believe it. And uh, she oftentimes really kind of funny because uh, oftentimes she will uh, either defer or call out her teammates. <laughs> in, a, in a good way, in yeah. a good way though. <laughs> and you can see it, there are times like when Rain Tucker started to assert herself and that didn't really happen until she got into league play. And uh, just when Media would ask questions of Rain. They would smile about, oh, yeah, that's my roommate. Or, oh, yeah, you can tell on the court the connection they have is just, it probably goes off the court just as well. Foul is on right. That is her first. So just uh, general team chemistry. And that was one of the things that Coach uh, O'Regan was kind of concerned, not concerned, but curious about how the team chemistry would work with this, this team because you knew there was a lot of, expectations out of it. Cooper Williams will get a chance at the line and capitalizes. Five points for the redshirt senior from Dumfries, Virginia, C.D. Hilton High School. Her mom is often here in attendance during the ball games. Very nice. Nothing better than looking up and seeing mom in the stands. 40-point lead for JMU, and now the question, can the Dukes get the 79? Just, just taken away by Benitez. It's like she was picking apples. It's mine. Tucker, three-pointer. Rebound, barrier. A little too strong. Tucker tucks it in. It's a finisher shot in one way or another. 10 points for Rain Tucker. Coming off the bench to gobble up those 10. And that establishes a career high. She had eight against Longwood in the season opener, November the 6th. Foul at the other end is on Kamaya Smalls. I think the confidence with Rain's rebounding is coming off into her scoring. She's feeling more comfortable underneath the basket knowing that she can put up more points when needed. And Allie, that, that also is something as I've watched women's basketball here at JMU over the years. 
when Coach O'Regan, whether it was Coach Brooks, assistant coaches get out there and they scout players, they see a couple of elements that they like a lot and they understand that there are other parts of their game that will come to them later on. They will develop that part of the game. So you look at Carradine, for example, and Tucker, what they do, not necessarily scoring-wise, but elsewhere on the floor, are the things you need that add up with other results to get wins. I think that's what really asserts the dominance of JMU is that everybody knows their place. They know who needs to score. They know who needs to score when. And I think that it's just a matter of every single one of these girls is so very coachable that you can put them where they need to be, where you need them to be. And eventually you will see them emerge to do other things as their career progresses. And Absolutely. I think, I think Lexi Barrier is a good example of that. Came in as a scorer, is a scorer, but she does so much more on the floor for the Dukes now. Lexi Berry opens the doors for somebody like Kamaya Smalls to have that many points while not taking away anything from Kamaya, but they just build off of each other and they know when to be an outlet and when not to be. All a matter of the progress and the development uh, with a basketball program. Benitez, who started her career at Siena out there defending on the left wing, and that's popped in by Maggie Sharp. Maggie Sharp has her fifth three-pointer of the season, first points today. She just averages a point per game, and she's from the Commonwealth, went to Stafford, oh, excuse me, Mountain View in Stafford, Virginia. That was probably fighting words to say she went to Stafford. <laughs> and that will bring us to immediate timeout with 4.46 to go. JMU comfortably out in front. As they're barreling in on win number 17 overall, number eight in CA play. We'll come back with whether you're a fan of the Dukes or a fan of the Tigers. Hope you're enjoying our production here today on Flow Sports. That kicks out to Benitez. Well, that was an interesting rebound. <laughs> Everything counts, I guess. Uh, yes, it does. Just kind of rolled out of there. Green challenged by her counterpart. A little more emphasis on that ball would have gone to the basket. Murray gives it up to Jeter. Smalls is on her, crosses over, and got too far underneath. Although she did beat Smalls off the dribble. Yes, she did. I like the combination between Jeter and Smalls, and that's a really good matchup. Caradine glides to the rim. Jalen has her first bucket today. Averages just 2.7 points per game. But again, numbers like rebounding is uh, what she is more known for, at least at this stage in her career. Caradine also had to overcome a knee injury, so it took her a while to kind of get back into the groove. So we're seeing a, a different Jalen this year than what we did last year. That's right. It takes physical and mental capability to come back from that. I asked her if... Uh, she ran track in high school. She said, oh, yeah, she was a, she didn't like running, but she liked the field events. Her brother is a very good field specialist. Jeter with a floor rebound, and that's picked up. Possession error favors JMU. And that takes us to another media timeout. 314 remaining. Is that pie? 314? Three, four, yeah, 3.14. Yeah, 77 34. That sounds pretty good right now. Ready to play for about a minute there. I don't realize the, that they realize how long of a timeout they had to work with. The teams are back out on the floor. A lot of new faces out there, too. Eleanor Marcheski out there for the Dukes, as is Nikki Oppenheimer. And Sharp will score. And Oppenheimer gets into the uh, scorebook right away with the foul. Oppenheimer with the foul. That's her first rebound, Devin Merritt. So a lot of new faces here with the final three minutes to play here at the JMU Convocation Center. Oppenheimer launches a three. Ah, off the mark. Here's Green. Baseline jumper is good for Devin Merritt. That was a good possession to get all the other unfamiliar dudes warmed up in. What's in the scoring column for James Madison right now, Allie? What's in the scoring column? Yeah. How many points? 79. What's that mean? Chicken nuggets. That's right, from Chick-fil-A. Sadly, can't use it today. You have to wait till tomorrow. 
to get those at the Chick-fil-A on 30, Route 33 here in Harrisonburg. Take your uh, game ticket today. So all those youngsters that came in free because of the Duke Dog Reading Program can get fed tomorrow. Perfect. Foul is on Alpenheimer. She picks up her second. Two shots. Off the back of the iron for Mariah Gray, as she is a 5'7 senior from Ellicott City, Maryland, went to Good Council High School. Dukes have some pretty good football players from Good Council High School. Very nice. Shot is good for Gray. Pep Riley taking advantage of seeing an opponent shoot down there as well. Marcheski from Canada goes back court. She did not know where she was on the floor. Either that or she just couldn't find anybody to help with to Very get some true. help from. And backed up a little bit. Dukes again on the road uh, last weekend, back here at home today with this single game. Two games at home next weekend, the noon game Friday against the College of Charleston. Got a jump ball, the possession arrow did favor the Dukes. And it comes inbounds to Maddie Green. And then next Sunday, UNCW here, that is a televised game. Steve Buckhans rolls back into town to Join me for that call on TV as well. Foul is on Raina Barber, her second. And Maddie Green at the free throw line. Well, she can become with a free throw here the fifth player in double digits for the Dukes today. I mean, that's just an amazing accolade, especially because there are only two Dukes that came in double digits last time they faced Towson, which was uh, Lexi Barrier and Kamaya Smalls. And Green hits the uh, double digit mark. She's got 10. Good game for Green off the bench today. Dukes got uh, good support off the bench. 24 points to 8 for the Tigers off the bench tonight. And a blocking foul called as driving to the rim was Gray. Foul is on Merritt, that's her first. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by JMU. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of JMU and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by James Madison University. And Ali, you and I thank them for that. Absolutely. I don't know what else I'd be doing today. So for Gray, that gives her two points this afternoon. Ninety seconds remaining. Marcheski lost the handle, last touched. One of the Tigers got a claw on it. There you go. Had to put one in there. That's too easy. <laughs> easy as pie. Piece of pie. Easy as cake. Easy as chicken nuggets. That's, that's, well, that takes 79 that was, points. Yeah, that that's not that. always that easy. But I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just means you don't have to cook. Except we play on Sundays. Which is easy. 110 to go. So uh, let's see, coming up this week, uh, tomorrow, the Fan and Press Luncheon at O'Neill's Grill. Speaking of food, uh, that is at noon. You can watch the press conference. Coach O'Regan leads us off, then Coach uh, Lewis Rowe. And tomorrow we'll have Lauren Laporte, JMU softball, opening up the season next weekend. They head down to St. Pete, Clearwater. I'd like to go with them. Can't do so. All right, softball and baseball season already. Yeah, the, the baseball Dukes open up at nationally ranked uh, NC State with a three-game series. Well, that was a tough try for Barber, but she was amongst the trees, got a shot off nonetheless. Marcheski. Last touched by the Tigers. That she was looking for Oppenheimer. But uh, we have uh, the lacrosse game here on 
Wednesday night at 5. Uh, women's basketball, Saturday, uh, Friday at noon. Steps called against Green. Basketball, men's basketball, Saturday night at 8. And then women's basketball, Sunday at 2. Very nice. That's the week ahead. Gotta love crossover season. Yes, we get a little bit of everything. As this one winds down, the Dukes will improve their record to 17 and 4. And uh, keep Towson for only the second time in the history of this series from winning back to back games against the Dukes. And improving to 8 and 2 in the league. Towson will fall to 5 and 5 in league play and below. 500 in uh, overall play at 10 and 11. Marcheski called for the foul. Next up for the Tigers, they have a couple of home games. As uh, with the travel partners, they play the same teams the Dukes do next weekend, but reverse the order. They've got UNCW Friday night and Charleston Sunday afternoon. Seven and two, respectively, are the start times at the CQ Arena. Well, they've had three away games. I'm sure they'll be ecstatic to play at home for a nice weekend. And Drexel, Delaware, and here at JMU. And all three of those games will end up in the loss column for the Tigers as that'll do it this afternoon. The Dukes make everybody happy here at the combo with the exception of their guests from Towson. 81-39 is the final here at the combo. We'll take a short time out. We'll come back and wrap this one up. As you've been watching CA Women's Basketball, the Dukes defeating the Towson Tigers, 81-39 on Flow Sports. Do you own rental property but are tired of calls from tenants at all hours? Worn out by constantly searching for good tenants? Let Reiner Rentals manage your rentals so you can rest easy and maintain a profitable investment.